Right then, this is um, genetic factors in aggression. This is AQA psychology. Um, and where, when you look at genetic influences for a certain behaviour, um, there are well, there are several approaches you can take, but probably the two main ones are: first of all, does this behaviour have a genetic basis? Um, and secondly, can we actually find what gene might be causing a specific behaviour? Um, and this video is going to focus on the first of those questions, which is often found by doing twin studies. So, for example we would compare identical and non-identical twins. Identical twins um, share 100% of the same genes and so if a behaviour or a disorder is um, has a genetic cause then we would expect a very high proportion of pairs of, of identical twins to both have the same disorder or behaviour. Um, compared with uh, non-identical twins who don't share all their DNA um, and you ought to find that the instance of them both having the, the disorder is a lot lower and that allows us to compare the effects of, of nature and nurture because the um, because both sets of twins both identical and non-identical twins share the same environment the the thing that you're changing is the um, whether they have the same genes or not and so that enables us to compare the effects of genes versus the effect of the environment. So that's what we're looking at in this video. And in the next video, we'll be looking at specific genes that have been identified, which have been linked with aggression. So first of all, here's the research that we've got relating to twin studies and adoption studies, um, which tell us about whether there is a general, whether we think it is a genetic based behavior, aggression. That is. So the first one is Maguire et al, um, and that was a twin study. And um, in MZ twins, i.e. identical twins, it was a uh, 0.43 concordance rate and a 0.3 rate in non-identical twins. You can see there that the the rate for identical twins is higher. Uh, a little higher at least, um, which suggests that genes do play a part um, because it, you found a higher rate in identical twins compared to a lower rate in non-identical twins who don't share the same genes. Okay, next one, Kakaro et al. Um, he studied aggressive behaviour using twin pairs and found this is a, a much more significant difference. You can see that he's got the concordance rate for MZ twins is 50% and for, for um, non-identical twins 19%. So that suggests actually a, a bigger genetic component than the other study suggests because there's quite a big disparity between those two figures. Um, Although, having said that, they looked as well at different types of aggression and they found a higher concordance rate for physical aggression, um, direct attacks, compared to verbal aggression. So um, that study is quite a key study really and it suggests that we do again have a, a fairly strong genetic component to aggression. Um, and the last study that we're looking at, this was a meta-analysis, and this is both um, on twin studies and adoption studies. Um, bearing in mind adoption studies, what you'd be looking for is a similarity in behaviour. If you want to find a genetic component, you'd be looking for a similarity in behaviour between the adopted child and their biological parents, um, rather than if you think that it's an environmental thing that's been learnt, you would expect similarity in behaviour between an adopted child and their adopted adoptive parents. So that's why we do adoptive studies. So Rian Waldman then, they f did a meta-analysis and they found that genetic influences accounted for 41% of the variance in aggression. So having looked at all these different studies, they basically concluded that genetic influences were playing a part. So that's three fairly, fairly significant, fairly compelling studies that say actually we think that genetics has something to do with this. Where do we go with our evaluation in this topic? Um, so we've got three studies suggesting genetics play a part. However, we've not got 100% concordance rates. So if you, if a, um, a behaviour was entirely genetic, then um, we would ha expect to find 100% concordance rates 
in people with identical DNA, i.e. identical twins. Um, the fact that we're not finding 100% concordance, actually 50%, significantly lower than that, suggests that it's not just genetics. We know it is at least partly environment that is playing a part in um, aggressive behaviour developing. And it's very hard to untangle um, those two things, nature versus nurture. How do you figure out which is which? Because you can't ever look at either of them in isolation. Twin studies might be flawed. Um, we kind of assume, you know, you're keeping the both twins share the same environment, therefore any differences will be down to genetics. But actually, neither identical nor non-identical twins ever have exactly the same environment and experiences, particularly non-identical twins actually if you think about it, non-identical twins may be different sexes, you can have a girl and a boy, uh, they might have really different um, upbringings from each other, even in the same house they'll be treated differently um, almost certainly because of the fact that they're different sexes uh, or they could be different sexes and so actually it might be those sorts of experiences that might be feeding into aggression we just don't know for it with any certainty so actually saying that in twin studies we're confident that it's the genetics that's making a difference in the concordance rates is a little flawed because actually their experiences might be different too and that could be affecting it as well um, a lot of these studies rely on self-report or reports from parents. That can be a problem, particularly in this area because it's a socially sensitive area. Parents don't like to admit that their kids might be a bit aggressive. Um, they might play it down um, or not admit it at all. So um, that's a really big issue with some of these studies. Um, then there's two um, kind of debates that we um, can consider in this area. The first is determinism. Actually, if you're saying that um, aggression is determined by our genetics, that's a problem because um, you're saying that we don't have free will. Um, you're suggesting that um, it's almost a get out clause for people who uh, commit crimes because of aggression, um, that actually it's not their fault, it's just because they've got the genes. Um, and it's suggesting that we don't have the um, conscious ability to control our behaviour, which a lot of people would disagree with. So uh, that's one issue. The other issue is reductionism. Actually, um, if you think about the fact that aggression is a very complex behaviour in terms of what situation it's triggered in, um, what, uh, how it plays out, um, differences between physical and verbal aggression, uh, differences between the amount of aggression experienced and the amount of aggression actually expressed, all sorts of issues there. It's very complex and actually reducing it down to if you have this gene you will be aggressive um, or this is the cause of aggression um, is, is really reductionist. It's only considering one tiny element of, of what could be causing it. Um, there's all sorts of other things that could be feeding into it. What about um, cognitive Cognitive processes, if we've learned a cognitive process that's maladaptive, that could be feeding into it. Uh, social factors, um, such as um, we behave more aggressively in the presence of certain other people and, and not in, in other situations. Uh, it could be learning, past experiences have caused a learnt response, all sorts of other things. And if we were to take all of those things into account, rather than simply focusing on genes, then that would be a holistic approach, would be considering the person as a whole to look at, at the aggressive response. And so um, just focusing on genetic factors is quite reductionist because it dismisses a whole raft of other things that could be involved in a complex behaviour.